Okay, so the data now looks in a format I can utilize. It's now in a format which is ready to go into our database, which is a separate file called orders. So I'm now ready to create a macro that appends this data for October 2016 into the orders um, file. In fact, before we do that, let's just make sure we've clearly got a clean copy of October. I'm going to go to Import File over here in my Visual Basic Editor, click on that, press F5, and I'm going to bring in a clean copy of October. All right, now I'm going to click on Fill Labels on this side here, press F5, and it automatically fills the labels. Now I'm going to click on Add Dates, press F5, and I'm going to add the date the 1st of the 10th, 2016. And OK. So this data is definitely now ready to be imported and added to the orders file. Let's have a look at the orders file just so you can appreciate that before you get into creating the macro. If we go file open, you'll find I've given you a file called orders. And if you have a look at it, it's got the same sort of column headings, date, state, channel, price, category, units and net. And if I was to press control down arrow, you'll see it currently has 3, 000, um, 3,300 records, um, excluding the column heading. And if I press control up arrow, it goes back to the top. So what I'm wanting to do is I'm now wanting to append my October 2016 data to this database. The other thing to be aware of is a named range has been used in this file. If I hit the drop down on named ranges um, and choose database, this range here has been called database. So not only are we going to append our records to this database, we're going to have to extend that named range to account for the fact that there are more rows now and that it doesn't just stop at 3,300, um, which if I take you down, that's where it stops at the moment. Named ranges were covered in stage three. If you're not familiar with named ranges, I suggest you find out about them. Um, and it's useful to understand named ranges are managed under formulas by the name manager. And so database refers to A1 to G 3301. And we're going to have to extend that to account for the fact that we've added more records. So I'll close and I'll close the orders file. All right, let's put our code and our Excel file side by side. And now I want to create a new macro. And this macro is called append database. So I'm going to record macro, give it the name append database, and OK. I'm going to select A1, even if it's already selected, and you can see my code generating itself in the Visual Basic Editor. I'm going to select the current region by going Control Asterisk. Now, actually, before I do that, select A1, even if it's already selected, I can get rid of the um, column headings, because I'm not going to need that when I append it to the database. Right-click Row 1, delete that, and then go back to A1. So select A1, get rid of row 1. Now I want to select the current region, control asterisk, and I want to take a copy, control C. I now want to open up that orders file. So file, open, and orders. I now want to get to the very bottom of this file orders. Now let me just check my screen is coming up correctly. There it is there. So I'm going to press control down arrow to get to the bottom and then I'm going to go down one more and that's where I want to paste. So I'll go control V and paste it. So I've pasted my data. Now I want to update the named range. So I'm going to go into formulas and name manager and I'm going to edit this so I will select A1, control shift right arrow, control shift down arrow, through to A, oh sorry, G3479. That's how far this list goes down now. And go back and tick that. So now the database range applies to A1 to G3479. I'll then close that and I'll go back to A1. So that's updated now. 
and really I now want to close the file without saving. I don't want to save the file because I'm not entirely sure the code's working yet and I don't want to muck up this file. So I'm going to go File, Close. Do you want to save? Don't save. And then stop recording. And let's have a look at the code. I'll take any, any excess comments. All right. So row one is selected and deleted. A1 is then selected and the current region is selected and a copy is taken. Then the file orders is open. This here is me mucking around trying to get my window sorted out. So I'm going to take out these various comments here. Once I open up orders, I simply want to go to A1. Then I want to press control down arrow. Here is where I then say go down one more. I don't like this statement. Going down one more cell says go to A3302. Well, that will vary every single time. That actually needs to come out. And I'm going to put in its place active cell, from the active cell, full stop, offset, open bracket. And this is where you say how many rows and how many columns. I want to come down one row, comma, zero columns. Close bracket, full stop, select. So I have the statement here, selection, end, Excel down. Excel down is control down arrow. Then I'm saying from that active cell, come down one more row and paste. Then for some reason I'm selecting this particular cell, which I don't need to, so I can delete that. Then my wiggle is turned off and that's fine. And then here it says that the name database refers to row 1, column 1, and then row... 3479 column 7 which is G. Um, I would probably change that. In fact I would totally change that. What we would like to do here I'm thinking is we have just got the need to select the current region and then name the selection. Under the paste statement I'm going to add a statement to select the current region again. So I'll insert a row and up here we can probably copy and paste it from somewhere like here. I'm going to take a copy of that, control C or right click copy, whichever you're more comfortable with, and paste that in here. Alright, so we paste, the current region is selected, the wiggle's turned off, and then the selection, full stop name, oops, the selection full stop name equals database which means that current region which I just selected and you could even put the cut copy mode drag that up to there so paste it turn the wiggle off select the current region name the current region database select the cell a1 and then close the file now normally after active workbook full stop close you would have a parameter that said save changes equals false which means close it without saving or save changes equals true which means close it and save without asking but because neither of those parameters are there save changes is false or ch save changes is um, true then it will automatically ask you do you want to save the changes and we'll leave that there for the moment till we check it's working properly. So I want to do a test. Let's first of all start with clicking on the subprocedure import file and pressing F5 and bringing in the November file. Actually no, bring in the October file. So that's brought in that. Click on fill labels, press F5 and that filled the labels. Click on add dates, press F5 and add the date the 1st of the 10th, 16. I keep wanting to put a 1 in there and OK. And then append. Let's F8 that. F8, select row 1, delete it. Select A1, select the current region, copy it. Open the file orders. Go to A1, go down, go down one more, paste it. Turn the wiggle off. Didn't really do anything, but it's not going to hurt. Select the current region. The selection's name is database. I can see that showing there now. So it's actually updated the name database. Select A1. Close the file. Because we haven't put a parameter to save changes yes or save changes no, it will ask us. So I'm going to say don't save. 
okay um, and so that successfully works and so after workbook active workbook full stop close I'm going to put save changes colon equals true so it does actually save the changes and now I'm going to run the whole thing for October and then that should be um, nicely added so I may even hit this drop down here and go import file run October fill labels there it is there run done followed by add dates run 1 slash 10 slash 16 and now append database run and it just does it let's go and check orders that it actually has got that data successfully appended so I'll open orders and I'll press control down arrow and there I can see successfully my October 2016 records have been added to orders control home I'm now going to close orders and that's that portion completed